No one could have imagined that this little girl would grow up to lead a life of extraordinary exploits, solitude, and adventure in northern Canada. This one was taken on her first birthday. You can see that she really was quite a beautiful little girl with the, the blue eyes. And then we have some later photographs as well, which show her as quite the elegant uh, young lady. Certainly there's no indication that she was going to um, lead um, such a, a, an interesting and diverse life, life as a prospector. You know, she was constantly in the news uh, because she was doing things that women weren't doing. Um, and that included uh, shooting the rapids uh, over long distances, uh, taking her, her canoe and traveling to places where people hadn't looked at the rocks, they hadn't been prospecting. There was just a lot of new things that Kate Rice did that really women weren't doing. Kate Rice was born to Henry Lincoln Rice and Charlotte Carter in December 1883 members of a prominent milling family in St. Mary's, Ontario. The house that um, Kathleen grew up in uh, was a gift uh, to her parents upon their marriage by her grandfather George Carter and it's a very substantial uh, large home. She attended local public school here as well as uh, the collegiate uh, where she um, was a very good student. Following the expectations of the Society of the Times, Kate pursued a career in teaching. She received two scholarships to the University of Toronto, graduating in 1906 with a BA in mathematics. Her first job was teaching summer school in Tees, Alberta. She went on to become a professor of mathematics at Albert College in Belleville, Ontario, and taught briefly in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. But the call of the wild was too much for Kate. She chose to buck the rules of the day concerning women and head north. This time of year, I mean, you'd be making sure you had enough firewood for this season. You'd be getting your sled dogs, uh, making sure all your sled dogs were healthy. You'd be putting up some meat. She'd be out hunting. She'd be out fishing. She'd be gathering enough to sustain herself through the winter in the house that she built in the woods. At a time when a woman was not considered as a person under the law, Kate Rice endeavored to overcome social and legal barriers to achieve her goals as an adventurous, industrious, and knowledgeable explorer and entrepreneur. When she was first homesteading in about 1916, uh, she wasn't allowed to take the property under her own name. It was under her, her younger brother's name because women were not persons. Against all odds, Kate Rice made a living as a prospector for 50 years, traveling by dog team and canoe as far as 800 kilometers north of the Pa. She was a successful prospector with several discoveries to her name. In 1916, Kate partnered with retired Army officer Dick Woosey. In 1925, they built a house on Woosey Island near Snow Lake. Whether they had a romantic relationship, we're not sure, but we certainly know from the records that they had a successful business relationship. She did, uh, at some point, go to Bay Street and raise money, which was also very unusual for a prospector. Um, and as part of her endeavor, she attracted uh, Inco to Manitoba. And in fact, some of her claims are still owned by Inco, which is now Valet. Just the idea that she was able to sell Manitoba to Bay Street um, and the mining moguls uh, in Toronto means now uh, there are towns like Snow Lake, Flin Flon, and Thompson that have been mining for 75 years. Dick Woosey died unexpectedly in 1940. Kate remained on Woosey Island, writing, gardening, prospecting, hunting, and trapping. She was a contributor to the Toronto Star and the Globe. 
She also wrote scientific articles on the Aurora Borealis and 600 pages of journals on her life in the North. Her last two years were spent in Manadosa, Manitoba, in a nursing home. Kate Rice was truly a trailblazer for women interested in the mining industry. Uh, we know a little bit from, from newspaper articles that Kate was very influential at the time. In fact, there's a mention that as a result of her work, there were dozens of women taking prospecting classes in Winnipeg in the 30s and 40s, which is remarkable. If women could understand the thrills of prospecting, there would be lots of them doing it. No woman need hesitate about entering the mining field because she is a woman. It isn't courage that is needed so much as perseverance. She's definitely a role model for all those young women uh, currently studying geology. We're now up to almost 50% uh, enrollment of women in undergraduate programs. Uh, we want to make sure that we retain those women uh, in the industry and one of the ways of doing that is to show how women with strength and courage uh, can be successful in uh, a mining industry.